Look at there. Some good poppers. The longer it's on, the worse it gets. So that could actually be... Hey, welcome to D-Lab. We got another tech tip for you this week. Robert Mondavi and I are going to troubleshoot a Ward's Airline 1948 tube radio. And guess what I got? Yep, the new D-Lab wine glasses are here. I'm going to try it out tonight while I fix the Ward's. So this radio suffers from a common problem that I run across a lot when I'm working on these radios. And of course, you know, the first thing I do is just recap everything, right? Throw in tubes and you guys are like, whoa, hey, what was wrong with the radio? Let me show you what this problem is. And I bet you you've actually heard this before, but didn't know this was going on. Well, this is the Ward's radio that you recently saw me change out the volume pot in. I used the coupler. So I was able to use the existing spline shaft and keep the knobs original, okay? I'm going to plug the radio in, and we're going to take a listen. So like any other AM radio, got your white noise, she's sitting there playing. But in this case, I've got the volume control turned all the way down. Do you hear what I hear? Hear those snap crackle pops? No, there's not Rice Krispies inside. There's something going on with the radio generating noise even when the pot's all the way down. So it shouldn't be passing any audio, right? But it is. So you hear the pops? Let's put it on a scope and see what they look like. All right, I'm monitoring the output. Look at there. Some good poppers. The longer it's on, the worse it gets. So that could actually be a bad element in the output tube, which is a 35L6. So first off, let's just change it, okay, and see if that eliminates the problem. But remember, I have not recapped this radio. It's fooled those old waxers. More than likely, it's a bad cap. But let's try the tube. What the heck? So there's the original 35L6. I've substituted in another. Take a look at the scope. Still got it. Snaps and pops and lightning storms in the background, which if you listen to your AM radio, that's normally what you hear, right? Atmospheric noise. But maybe it was the radio itself you were hearing all this time, right? So now, let's cut to the schematic of this radio. We'll narrow down the area that we're going to work on. It's obviously not the tube, so it's going to be capacitors. So let me show you the schematic and we'll go from there. Here's a schematic on the Ward's radio. So I'm going to simplify this for the problem that we're troubleshooting, all right? So the RF area is here, and then they go through what's called the IFs, okay? So that converts radio frequency down to the audio frequency, which you can hear through the speaker of the radio. You got your power supply here, and there's all the tube filaments. But what we want to concentrate on is the audio section, which is these two tubes. So we're going to come in here, we're going to like draw a line, because I'm really not concerned about what's going on back here. I'm concerned about what's going on from here to here to the speaker. So let's zero in on this section. So the area that I want to concentrate on is these two tubes. This is your audio preamp, the 12SJ7, and then that feeds the 35L6 output tube, which goes to the speaker. Right here is your volume control, and as you remember, I recently replaced that on this radio, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to just turn the volume all the way down and see if the noise goes away. If it does go away, the problem is that away. If it does not go away, the problem is this away. So let's check it out. Well, now that we've determined that the problem is in the audio section, those would be the caps that I'm going to replace. And let's see if that solves the problem rather than just shotgunning and changing all the caps and wondering which one was causing the issue, right? So we're going to replace all the caps that are related to the 35L6 tube. So there's a 25 microfarad guy here. There's some old wax drippers around here. Those are all coming out. And we'll turn the radio back on, see if the noise is gone. 
All right, got the Heiko warmed up, getting ready to change out those caps, so I always put on some tunes. Tonight, it's The The, The Dusk. You may think, what a weird sounding name for a band, but I'll tell you what, take a listen to this guy. They are absolutely killer. All right, so close up view. Looks like we got like three or four caps here directly terminated to the socket of the 35L6 tube. So we're just gonna cut one out at a time. First cap's changed. That old dripper's out. Is the noise gone? No. Let's do another cap. Second cap changed. Warming her up. Still popping. Let's do that one. Third cap changed. Still got it. Keep changing caps. I had a thought. Maybe what we're actually hearing could be the power supply cap itself. Um, even though it's not humming, it does go direct to that output tube and to the voice coil of the speaker. So there's a good chance that if the high voltage itself is kind of cutting in and out, it could also be causing this noise. So maybe if we don't find out what it is changing these caps, we'll move back into the power supply. So while I was working on this thing, I was noticing that this resistor here was getting wetter and wetter looking. This is a 1.5K resistor. Using the VTVM to look at the voltage, we've got about 125 volts here. And around 75 volts on the other side of that resistor. But she's really getting hot. It's starting to have this wax just boiling out of it, right? It's probably because there was another cap in contact with it at one time. But the resistor, you can see, is discolored. And it's getting hotter and hotter the longer I played this radio. And this voltage is dropping and jumping around. And guess what that goes to? The filter cap. We're going to change out the cap, change that resistor, and see if the noise goes away. I've changed out that filter cap. Got some fresh ones in there. They're just kind of hanging, so yeah, it's kind of dangerous. The old sweaty resistor is gone. Let's plug it in. Oop. No improvement. So I'm going to continue changing these wax caps and then I see a little mica guy right here which appears to be related to that 35L6. So I want to see what that cap is in the circuit. It could be a little bit of that silver migration they talk about where it arcs across and it appears to go right to this little cap here that goes right to the 35L6. I don't have the schematic right here, so I can't verify it, but I'm gonna continue with these wax caps first. All right, so still fighting the noise. This is unbelievable. So I've changed out most of all the caps, as you can see, and of course the filter cap. So I got the bright idea to disconnect this little capacitor, which feeds the audio input to the 35L6, comes off this tube, but this has that mica cap that I was talking about, so I'm going to plug her in. If you listen now, there's absolutely no noise. So I'm guessing it's that mica cap. Let's change it out and see if that fixes it. All right, so I pulled that mica cap out, which was a 470 puff. I substituted in a little 500 puff in its place. Guess what? No noise. That was it. Holy crap. So, guys, this is why I just change all the caps. Because it takes a lot of time to find the one that was bad. And in this case, it was that old creepy silver mica. It got me. All right, so it looks like that little mica cap was the culprit causing that noise in the audio. Normally, when I go into these old guys, as you know, I just change all the caps. But you know what? 
I don't normally change the micas. So if you watched while I was going through that radio trying to find that noise, I went right around that mica cap. I was like, well, we'll change the papers. Oh wait, maybe it's a power supply. But I kept talking about that stupid mica cap. And that's usually how it goes, guys. It's usually the last one that you change. So beware if you order a cap kit for your radio. If you have these micas, especially if you're working on these kind of radios and you got some crunchies going on, change the mica. Pretty good tech tip there, huh? Save yourself a lot of time, guys. Change all the caps. You're gonna do it anyway. Why troubleshoot it? That's the way D-Lab operates. Now let's talk about these new D-Lab glasses. I happen to have a whole case of them here. I'll try to show you without dumping them on the floor. But look at there. You can see all the bottles in that box. Bought a case of these to share. So let me give you a close-up view of one of these new fine specimens. Or should I say wine specimens? Huh. Anyway, it's a nine ounce glass. And this is one of those uh, stemless wine glasses. Kind of looks cool when you're talking. You're kind of swirling it around as you talk, right? It's got the D-Lab logo, which is actually a tube envelope. So the plate comes into the D. There's a grid. There's your little cathode and the heater. D-Lab electronics. How slick is that? It's done in two colors. And I'm told it's permanent. I guess you'll find out when you put it in a dishwasher or if you scrub it with steel wool. To cover my cost, if you want one, just send me at least a $20 donation on dlabelectronics.com and I'll send you a glass. It's the best I can do. I paid a lot of money to get the first ones made because of the setup fees, <clears throat> but they'll get cheaper as we go. Hope it gets popular. D-Lab, doing some merchandising. See ya.